Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end, we calculate and look at the financial ratios. I'm going to do this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. I answer every single comment, so feel free to ask a question or leave your thoughts. The company we're going to look at is Barrick Gold, and this is a mining company that produces gold and copper. This has been pretty popular in the news lately because Warren Buffett invested a lot of money in this company. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $48.1 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're trading at $26.99, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that back to today's value, which is exactly what we're doing in this video. Now I'm pulling their actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Next, we're going to pull the net income. That's the profit and loss on the income statement. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales for each year. Let's look at the numbers. So they have positive free cash flow every year, which is good. One year they had negative net income, but they have positive free cash flow. So they generate more cash than they spent. And it looks like their sales are pretty steady. It actually dropped in 2018, but it, it was its highest in 2019. Let's look at a capital structure. The interest they pay in their debt is $426 million. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to liability section. And current debt of $350 million. That's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of $5 billion. That's debt due after 12 months. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. We'll go back to the income statement. Income before tax of $6.4 billion. Income tax of $1.8 billion. So the effective tax rate is 28%. The cost of debt is 5.6%. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a low beta. They're a gold stock, so I would expect them to have a low beta. You generally invest in gold when you want to hedge against the market. 0.32 means the stock moves one-third of the market. Let's get their current assets. We'll go back to the balance sheet. We need just to calculate the current ratio later. And that's 6.9 billion. Let's see what that is. 3.3 billion of cash, 68 million of net receivables, 2.3 billion of inventory, and 88 million of other. Let's also get their current liabilities. That's 2.4 billion. Let's see what that is. Current debt of 350 million, accounts payable of 715 million, taxes payable of 224 million, accrued liabilities of 440 million, deferred revenues of 328 million, and 90 million of other. We also need that stockholders equity. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's $21 billion. That's assets minus liabilities, and that's 29 billion of common stock, negative 9.7 billion of retained earnings. So that means they're operating at a loss historically. Negative 122 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's also go back to the income statement and get their operating income. That's 2.5 billion. Let's look at a capital structure. Cost of debt is 5.6%. They're 20% debt. Cost of equity is 4.8%. They're 80% equity. And the WAC is 5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. That's here in blue. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. That's in green here. We get a value of the company of $37 billion. We divide that by 1.8 billion shares. We get an intrinsic stock price of $21. It's trading at $27, so it's trading at a 28% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $23, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So of course it's been up because gold has been up the past few months. But it looks like it's at its highest point of all time. Let's look at the financial ratios. 
They have a good PE, a not such a good price of sales, and a really good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 12.1. So investors are paying $12 for $1 of net income. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 5.0. So investors are paying $5 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.2. So investors are paying $2.20 for $1 of book value. Good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and good ROA. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity, so they provide a pretty good return to the equity holders, 19%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to other companies. I did a video on Kirkland Lake Gold, and they're here on the right, and Barrick is here on the left. And Barrick is better in prices earnings, price of sales, price to book, and current ratio. All important ratios. But Kirkland has a much better ROE and they're 0% debt, while Barrick is 20% debt, which is not too bad. But Barrick is a much bigger company at 48 billion market cap, and Kirkland's 14.4 billion market cap. So leave a comment, let me know what you think. I always reply to comments. Thanks for watching.